Southern California is one of those places that I enjoy it more and more every time I go. Today on Dirt Lifestyle, Brad with Trail Recon is gonna take me to a place down here that I've never been to and never heard of, and we show that you can have a great time and go to amazing places with very minimal overland gear. Today I'm getting a essentially private tour of the San Diego area from my buddy, Brad. You've seen him on my channel before, and I'm sure if you've ever typed in off-road anything, on YouTube, you've seen Trail Recon come up. And today, I'm uh, well, I'm coming back from my trip through Mexico, and I reached out to Brad because it's not very often we're in the same place at the same time. And so he's gonna take me basically on a tour of where he lives. And I'm very fortunate, and if you want, you can tell us where we're gonna go. Yeah, so I'm gonna take you to some of our local favorite spots. So we're gonna go out uh, about two hours from here to the Anza Borrego Desert, and people think the desert, uh, just barren stuff. You're gonna see this. That's what I think. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful out there. There's some really cool stuff. So we're gonna take you uh, to some caves. We're gonna take you to some big sandstone canyons that are tight and narrow, which you know, you're gonna have to fit that taco in through, which will be fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll take you to a couple other cool spots, depending on, uh, on how much time we got. But we're gonna have a blast, dude. And we're gonna camp out there and just have a good time, so. It's gonna be cool. This is gonna be a trip where it's just gonna be me and Brad. It's gonna be, uh, it'll be nice. We're, uh, we can't control that. <laughs> we're in Brad's garage. Just, uh, I'm charging up my gear from my Mexico trip, and so you're gonna hear all kinds of birds chirping and stuff driving by, but um, it's gonna be awesome, because it'll just be me and Brad, we're gonna get to catch up, we're gonna get to have good campfire conversations and swap war stories and whatnot, and I figure I'd bring you guys along with. After a quick stop in Ramona for some food, wood, and beer, we hit the road, and I couldn't help but notice how amazingly perfect the weather is down here. Where I live in Tacoma, it's rainy for about nine months out of the year, so I couldn't wait to get out, set up camp in weather this good. So Nate, just kind of thinking about camping, so I've got you know dozens of campsites uh, marked out in Anza, but it's a weekday, and so we might get lucky, man, and we might get uh, Sandstone Canyon all to ourselves and be able to camp back there, which is really cool. I haven't done it in years. Sounds great. Oh, I like it. That sounds great. Bumbleberry. I'm in for that. That sounds awesome. Crumb or flaky? Uh, what do you like, dude? You want crumb or flaky? What do you got? Oh. <laughs> she says crumb, I say crumb. crumb, we do crumb. <laughs> All right, crumb it is. One thing I've learned after traveling so much is if the locals tell you to eat somewhere, you eat somewhere. And Brad insisted that we stop and get pies from this place called Mom's. So now that we have all the essentials, including food, fuel, beer, and pies, it's time to head out east and finally see this place Brad has been telling me about. Anza Borrego is surprisingly close to San Diego. And in only an hour and a half, we're able to go from city life to way up in the mountains to all the way back down to desert floor. And as soon as we pulled off the highway and got into dirt, I felt right at home. This system of trails is in no way difficult to drive in. You don't really need four-wheel drive in my opinion, and my bone stock Toyota Tacoma did just fine here. But that's not why you come to places like these. It's fun to get off-road, there are some rocky sections if you want to play around a little bit, but we're coming here to get beautiful views, outstanding camping, and just get away from the city for a little while. And as I was about to find out, this place offers more than just great camping and good views. Okay, so this is the largest cave in the area. You're definitely gonna want a flashlight or a good headlamp uh, as we go in here. I'm not an expert, uh, but I've been coming here for a long time. And so this is one of the most dense populations of mud caves in, in the United States, uh, maybe the world, I don't know. Uh, but all these caves are formed from erosion of water. So when it rains, it just continues to erode these. You never wanna come here uh, after a rain because stuff will collapse, but uh, there are a lot of these out here. And every once in a while, we'll come out here and we'll try to find uh, you know some new ones. But this is the one that most people like to go to just because it's pretty big and it goes back pretty far, so. What's this one called? Uh, it's, this whole place, the whole place <laughs> is called a Royal Tapiad. Uh, oh. And I'm sure that means something in uh, Spanish, but I don't know what that means. I'm sure somebody will tell us. Somebody will tell us in the comments, I'm sure. Wow. Okay. Pretty cool. So, this is just erosion from the water? It's just, yeah, over years and years and years that the water just 
coming from the top of the mountain, working its way down, just erodes this out. Jeez. Every once in a while you come in here and you'll see sections, new sections of collapse, you know, some rocks have fallen or whatever, because this stuff gets pretty brittle uh, after a rain, because it's just mud. And so, if you ever come out here during a rain, or after a rain, those canyons we were driving through, you'll see new collapses. And sometimes it's cool because it makes for new obstacles out there, but you really have to be careful if you're camping or whatnot. To make sure you stay away from the walls. You can see all the collapse. Collapses all over the place. Growing up, we went to a lot of national parks, and I've actually been in a lot of caverns throughout the United States. But what's cool about these is that there's no tour guide, it's just you and a flashlight and a buddy, and it's a neat way to break up the day so you're not just camping and driving. Air cave. So this is usually pretty cool. When the sun is bright outside, you know, it's high, oh, high yeah. light. That is cool. It comes kind of through all the way, which is pretty neat. So This is awesome, man. Yeah, I love it. It's just neat. There's a bunch, there's a bunch of these. There's, there's some where, some where you get pretty tight, you gotta get pretty low, but you can just keep on exploring them and stuff. <laughs> After Brad gave me a little tour of these caves, it's time to get back out on the trail. But I did realize that there's a little bit of an issue going on with my truck. I just got back in my truck. We'll see if you guys can hear it. Oh yeah, this thing is falling apart from this trip. <laughs> Brad's gonna take the camera. This factory off-road skid plate. <laughs> Brad's over there laughing. <laughs> I've been talking about this poor Toyota so, so hard on this trip. It is uh, it is uh, not very off-road rated, let's just put it that way, and it has bent its way like into the wheel. So I'm gonna have to bend that back, then we get back on the trail. That will work for now. So we're taking a right here, uh, gonna head towards Diablo drop-off, which over the years has kinda not become, so Diablo is pretty easy, but there's a really cool flexi section uh, right here, which is fun. Well, what, is this Diablo drop-off? This is Diablo drop-off, and thankfully it's a little more rutted out than the last time I was here, and this changes, you know, over time with wear and weather and whatnot. So last time I was here, it's been a while, it was pretty flat, but now some of the ruts have come back, so this should be good and fun and flexy. Cool, yeah, it looks pretty rad. Of course, it's a dirt road on camera, but for us, it looks pretty rad. It does, <laughs> it's steeper than it looks on camera. Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty ruddy, so yeah. it'll be fun, yep. for sure. Let's do it. If you've seen very many of my other videos where I'm going rock crawling in very hardcore locations with my Jeep on 40s. This obstacle is laughable, but humorous. This is fun. It doesn't have to be the hardest rock crawl on the planet for you to enjoy it. And little flexi sections like this help to break up the monotony of just driving down bumpy dirt roads. Sandstone Canyon, which is really cool, but it does get very tight in here, and there's a couple sections where we're going to have to go really slow, uh, and every once in a while, some new rocks will fall, and there'll be an interesting new obstacle, so we'll see how it goes along the way. <laughs> When it comes to photography, perspective is everything, and even though on the outside it looks like this stuff isn't that narrow, when you're sitting in the driver's seat, it feels like you're basically fender to fender in between these rocks. We know going into it that we're narrow enough to fit through, but it still feels like it's quite a squeeze when you're driving yourself through these passages.
What do you think? We can set up camp first and then have some dinner? Yeah, I mean, my tent only takes about 30 seconds to pop up, which should be cool. <laughs> well, I'm and jealous. Then... <laughs> mine's, mine's a little bit longer than that. <laughs> I'll help you out, dude. I'll help you out. <laughs> now that we made it to camp, it was time to set up, make some food, start a fire, and start to relax a little bit. Oh, look at that. Oh, so good. <laughs> Dude, come on. That is so good. It's so good. <laughs> it's worth it. It's worth the stop every time. Oh my god. Yep. That is crazy, man. So Brad and I are wrapping up the day today, and we're just sitting around the fire, and we're just I mean, we're talking about all kinds of stuff. We're talking about how lucky we are that, that um, you know, we have, it's the middle of the week and we both are able to just get together because I'm on, in town and we can just do an impromptu trip. And then that rolled into the importance of gear and, you know, we've got all this expensive stuff back home. You know, I, I've got a Land Rover that's incomplete, of course. <laughs> you know, he's got a trailer and like, sometimes you don't need all that stuff. Like we're both just, we're just tenting it. We just set up a couple quick tents. We did a super quick trip. You know, this isn't wasn't a whole lot of driving today, yeah. and this is incredible. Yeah, I mean, to, it's it's so important that you know I, I'm a gear. Admittedly, I'm a gear junkie. Me too. And I and I love checking out new gear and seeing how it works and trying it out and sharing that with people. But at the end of the day, when a buddy comes to town and he says, "I want to go wheeling," I'm just going to throw the basics in the jeep, just like we did today shelter water food and and now we are in this amazing place with this campfire we got some beers in our hand yep absolutely some stars <laughs> in the sky dude we were just talking before the camera started rolling and just what an amazing night this is because you don't need a ton of stuff to go have an adventure now it's nice there's things that you can have to make yeah you know adventures really nice, nice. Uh, especially on our longer trips right yeah absolutely it's so nice to have all that extra gear right when power and water and all that and carry extra food is very important but if you want to just go have a great experience with some good friends or family, don't don't let not having every single piece of gear limit you from doing that. We we could very easily have just uh, you know got dinner while I'm on my way through town, and right. right now I'd be at a hotel not knowing about this amazing <laughs> night. I mean, it, there is zero wind. Yeah. There's zero bugs. Yeah. And it's probably what like 60 degrees oh right now. I, I got to tell you, man. I mean, <laughs> we talked about it a little bit, but I was in Missouri, and then I was up in Death Valley, and I have been in minus three degrees. I was in. I just camped three nights ago in 20 degree weather, mm -hmm. uh, blistering cold, and this is perfect. This is amazing tonight. I am so looking forward to for spring and summer to decide to settle in. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, we're just. I don't know. I. I didn't. These videos are hard to make. You know, we're we're trying to get to the destination. I'm trying to make it to where we can share it with you guys because I know a lot of you guys like these adventure videos. And um, I I don't want to tarnish my enjoyment of these trips because I have to film the whole time. So as we were sitting here talking, I decided I'm going to wrap this one up tonight. I just wanted to share with you guys a little bit of our campfire conversation. And tomorrow I'm just going to go be a person, not a YouTuber. Yeah. And uh, Brad's going to continue to show me around this amazing place. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, if you want to continue to watch some of this trip, I guess you can watch Brad's video, which he's going to make tomorrow morning, or we're just going to have a coffee talk, right? That's it, man. We're going to do a coffee talk tomorrow morning. So look for that on Brad's channel. We don't even know the topic yet. <laughs> we'll work on that tonight with a beer. <laughs> yeah, right now we're just, in, we're just enjoying some time around the fire. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you guys.